A lot of you have been asking about AVIF conversions for the WebP converter. Well, guess what? You're now going to get it with version 3. The AVIF conversion isn't the only big thing about this latest version. Go and have a look at the changes over here and you're going to notice some pretty juicy ones. And we're going to open up the converter tool and have a look at it. The main big thing is that it's no longer known as the WebP converter. It's now known as the Pix Refiner. Now, I do want to point out that whenever you are using this tool, you must make sure you have a solid backup. If you're relying on the backup services of your host provider, you may get let down if you're not too careful because some host providers charge for you to reinstate a backup. So please check with your host provider that you can do that. I want to make a big recommendation all in one migration. What you do is you export your entire files database, your entire WordPress website down to your hard drive. That's a pretty safe way to go. And when it comes to using this tool on a brand new website, you'll be totally fine. But when you are running it on a legacy website, because maybe you've got people uploading images like a directory or authors or editors or anything like that, Maybe you've got a website that's been running for 10 years and it's got thousands of images. Any WebP conversion, image conversion tool that you run will pose some risk. So please make sure you take a backup test on a staging site. But please be aware, I can't predict every single problem you might get. But hey, you've got the code and you can go and use a little bit of AI or ChatGPT or Grok to help you out. So let's jump in and have a look at the new features and improvements in version 3 of Pix Refiner. Very quickly, I do want to mention that some people have been a bit confused about is this a plugin or not? It is a code snippet. Go and use the free code snippets plugin that you can get from the WordPress repository. Go and click the link in the video description, copy the code and paste it in here. Go and give it a title. I recommend Pix Refiner Image Optimization, but I'll let you decide on what you want to do. And once you've done that, go and hit Save Changes and then click Activate. Like I said, please make sure you've got a backup done first. And once you've done that and you go over to Media, you will now see Pix Refiner in your admin. Go and click it. Version 3 now gives you two panes just to make it easier to see the items in the log. And now it's gone from the last 100 to the last 500. I didn't want to make it too big, but I didn't want you to lose some pretty important information that might come through. Now, further down below, you will have some extra notes about how this works, and it will also mention or a reminder of your backups, things about AVIF. If you are going to use that feature, you might want to just double check with your host provider if they enable that within their settings, because some host providers don't do that. I have tried to build in as many checks as I can into this, but I do want to talk about a few really important ones. One of them is the rollback. So if any of your images fail to convert for whatever reason, maybe due to your host or provider, it won't do the conversion of that image. And it also won't delete that image either because some people said that if there was a bit of a failure, they might have lost the original image. Now, there is some fail saves built into here, but that is a pretty important one, the rollback. But there are some notes over for you down here and a reminder of how this works. But let's just jump back up because there are a few new buttons. The process still works in the same way where you can go and set your maximum widths or your heights by clicking this toggle. So if you go for resize mode width, you go and pop your values in. So the idea is, is that if I was to leave this as it is and I just go and click set width. By the way, if you ever want to reset anything I have here, go and click reset default and it will reset it. But the idea behind this is that if you go and upload an image that is already 1920 and you've got values like this, it will leave the 1920 as your main image, but then it will create other images for responsive needs in your back end files and database. And don't worry in your media library, you're only ever going to see one image. So it's going to work kind of how WordPress always works. But the other images in your file and database will be 1,200, 600, and 300. Maybe you don't want to go for those values and you just want to go for 900 and 400. And then when you click set whip, the log will tell you that is done. So when you now upload a brand new image or you click run all, it will now go through your media library and it will say, right, is the image already 900 or less? Any images that are greater, so let's say you had a 1000 pixel wide image or a 1920 or a 3840. It will scale that down to be 900 as your maximum. And then the next one will be 400. 
Now, by default, this always creates the 150 by 150 thumbnail for you. Some people have said, what if I want my thumbnail to be 200 by 200? Well, if you go back to the code and scroll down, not too far from the top, you will see the option where you can go and set it over here. So if you want your thumbnail size to be 200 by 200, you can change that here. I don't recommend doing that because lots of plugins and other tools and things will be latching onto the 150 by 150 size. So please take some caution if you change that. So what I'm telling you here with regards to your whips and your heights is no different to what we introduced in version two, but just as a reminder for anyone that's not aware, I would recommend that you go and just leave this to be reset default as the standard like that, unless you're being very specific. And if you don't want to set your whips and you want to do your heights instead, you can go and click height and then go and set your value. And I should point out at this point that any settings you set here, it saves it, it remembers it. And the next time you upload an image to your media library or via a widget, you know, the image widget and then you upload, or maybe you're using like something else and then you upload an image via that, it will then apply these settings. So if you've got an image and you've gone and set the sizes over here to be say 500, you can just put one value, but you are allowed up to four, plus you have the 150 that happens automatically. But if you were to go and do that and set the width, Every time you upload a brand new image, and this could be people using a directory or as editors, every image that gets uploaded, even if it was a 5,000 width pixel image, it will convert to 500 pixels wide. So this massively helps you out with regards to people that might be taking photos on their mobile phone or a really high res camera. This is going to save you so much space. Let's just click reset defaults again. And by the way, if you don't like how big the log is getting, just go and clear the log. Now let's go over to this button over here, min size. This is set to be zero at the minute. What's this all about? At the moment, every image that I push through here, whether I hit run all for legacy websites or brand new uploads, they're all going to convert to whatever are my maximums over here. OK, but maybe I know that I'm already uploading some really small JPEGs, for instance, and I know that like certain sizes I'm OK with, or maybe I've got certain PNGs that are also quite small and I want to keep them for whatever reason. If I was to go over here and I was to go and enter in a value like 35, for instance, and then hit set min size, no image below 35 now is going to get converted. I could upload a brand new image. I could hit run all. Nothing is going to happen. OK, even if you try and delete it, nothing, even if you hit clean up images, which is where you then get rid of all of the excess sizes. Because if you did upload a 3840 pixel wide image, you're going to get 10 versions of that in your file and database. You might not even realize it until you go looking for it. But if you go and say, do not well, set the threshold to be 35 kilobytes. If five of those images are below 35 kilobytes, they won't get touched. So this again is for some people that says, well, you know, maybe I don't mind the really small images. Again, another little extra feature we've added in for you. For simplicity, I'm going to click reset defaults just because I like to keep it all reset to what it needs to be. But at any time you want to actually touch anything that, you know, doesn't hit your sizes for your width, for your height or brand new uploads, just make sure you've set this to zero and there is a reminder over there. Now, here are the big, big ones, okay? We already had preserve original files in the previous version, but as a reminder, when you upload a brand new image, it will run through and it gets rid of the original PNG or JPEG. So it only leaves you, leaves you with the WebP. Or maybe you're doing a conversion on a legacy website but you're a little bit unsure about losing the original PNG or JPEG. You don't want to get rid of it until you're absolutely sure. Go and hit preserve original file. So brand new upload, it will keep the original 3840 pixel wide PNG. The same with if you hit run all. So maybe you've already got some sizes and then you change your sizes. Well, just hit preserve original. So it won't get rid of the old WebPs or PNGs or anything that you've got in there. Again, that was already in version two but I'm reminding you of it. But here we go, right? Disable auto conversion on upload. If you tick that now and you start adding in PNGs to your media library, they will not convert. Plain and simple, okay? If you add in a JPEG, it will not convert. So now it will only convert when you've gone and set it to actually convert, so you untick it. Now, what if though you have already done that 
and now you've added in five images, but you only want to convert three of them to be a WebP. Again, what we introduced previously is you go and click add from media library. And if I pick this image here, which is a really ridiculously small image, it's now going to say that is excluded. So if I've got say 20 images in my library and I want to exclude six of them from any conversions or anything whatsoever, any deletions, you know, all of that, just go and exclude them from me and you can add as many as you want. Again, this is another little fail safe to kind of help you out. And if you want to get rid of it and you now do want to convert it, just go and click remove and it's gone. And like I said, let's just go and hit reset defaults. But here's the big one for version three, set to AVIF conversion. And you do get a reminder up here to say, well, if you're going to do that, do you make sure you hit the run all kind of thing. It won't do it for you, by the way. That was just a warning little reminder to say, well, if you are going to have AVIF, you might as well run them all through so you got consistency on your website. So it won't apply it until you either hit run all or you upload a brand new image. Remember, whatever settings you set here, and you can have multiple settings on, I really want to make that clear. You could go with something like that as well. So a brand new image won't um, uh, convert, but at any time you hit run all, it will then convert it. We could even do that as well. So you drop in a PNG, it doesn't convert uh, and it won't delete it either. Then when you hit run all, it will convert it to AVIF because you've said set it to be that, but it will also maintain the original. So try it out. Okay. I, I mean, I've tried to give you as many options as possible. And I think that this makes it a lot more ultra safe for you. Please, please, please take a solid backup. A lot of people have used version 2, version 2.1, and they've had zero issues, right? Zero. Everything is fine. They've tested. Everything is fine. Solid. Live client website. Some people have said, oh, I had a bit of an issue. My reply is, where is your backup? And they go, oh, I didn't really take one. Or my backup provider is now going to charge me. Make sure you know how to restore if you ever need to use that facility. And that brings me on to the other extra thing I wanted to drop into here. We have export media as zip. Look at the top over here. I hope it comes through when I hit it. It's going to say, do you want to export your media? And that has now basically exported my media. So if you want to maintain what you've got before you go and do anything like this, just go and hit export and it will export it to a zip file. How do you re-import, highlight your images in your folder and just add them back to your uploads folder? It's no different to how you would normally add images. I like to think that as far as version three goes, the AVIF conversion works, all right? I am not joking. Look at this ridiculous image in my media library, 60 by 34 pixels, because obviously I was testing out the set width and the set height, make sure everything goes through okay. And I've done extensive testing on this version, okay? This is an image and it's preserve.webp. I'm now going to click set to IVF conversion. It's going to say, okay, by the way, there is a like some tips as well down here. If you do want to ask any questions to your host provider, you got to make sure your server supports that format. I just want to also quickly add before I hit run all the AVIF is okay on a majority of browsers, but if you've got a mobile phone, but it's not running iOS 16 or above, you will have issues with AVIF from about 2022. So if someone is using a phone previous or prior to 2022 and they are not, and they're still on iOS 15 or something like that, they will have an issue. And that's why I'm still on the fence about, is it okay to use AVIF? But if you want to use it, go for it. So I've gone and said set to AVIF conversion. And now I'm going to click run all because I've got legacy images. And you can see over there, it's gone and done the conversions. Also, you'll notice quality 80. That's because I've removed the quality slider from version 2.1. Some people noticed that it wasn't really making a huge difference, whether you picked 50 or 80 or 90. And I have found that some GD in Magic libraries with your host provider don't like to do that on the fly. So rather than misleading you to say, look, you can use this, it worked for me, but it might not work for others. It will now just default to uh, 80, 82 percent. So now I'm just going to hit OK. That skips through. Don't worry about that. By the way, there are some fixes as well for the image URLs in your media library if you got post or product. And like I said, I've extensively tested this out. And if I go back over to my media library, it's still 60 by 34. The reason why it's not converted back to 1920, even though that was my set, my max width, 
is because these values are below them. So remember, if it's above, it scales down. But if you're already below the maximums that you've set, it maintains it. That's how good this is. But look at the format, preserve.avif. And if I had an image like in Elementor and I had used a PNG, when it converts to WebP, the WebP image is there. And I can see and it's in the preview and everything. And if you convert it to AVIF, it is there. It's on the live website. It's in the preview, everything. You're not losing it. I'm running on an empty tank now. I don't know what else I can do with this tool. You don't have to use this. There are other plugins and other tools out there. But if you take a good backup, test it out. When it comes to game changers, in terms of optimization for your images, new websites definitely use this. I strongly recommend you use this. Legacy websites, test it out, but yeah, get it on there as well. The amount of space that you could save when you're adding images onto your websites is astronomical. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon.